going? Hey everyone, my name is Brian, and today I'm going to be chatting about living with my Tesla solar roof for the last six months. If you find this video useful and ultimately decide that Tesla solar is right for you, please check out my referral code below and you can save up to $500 on your installation. All right, let's get into it. So before diving into some of the data, uh, just a quick recap um, on my particular system. So I have the Tesla solar roof, that's the solar shingle, not the panels. It's a 15.1 kilowatt system uh, with two power walls and the annual estimated production is just north of 11,000 kilowatt hours. So my system was installed last December and turned on um, in mid-March. So with that said, uh, let's, let's take a look at some of the data and see how we did the last six months. You can see in this screenshot that I have, um, this was taken actually directly from the Tesla uh, mobile app, um, which I've been very fond of. Um, I use the app, I would say almost daily to sort of check in on, you know, how much energy is my roof producing? Uh, how much energy is my home consuming? Um, and so using the app, I was able to very quickly um, grab some of the data I was in interested in reviewing today. So you can see, um, so year to date, um, I've generated almost 11 uh, megawatt hours. Um, so almost, um, almost up to um, the predicted estimate which is surprising because today it's uh, the middle of October. And like I mentioned, um, while the roof was installed in December, um, we didn't get to uh, turn it on to, you know, to full capacity until mid-March. And so this is even reflected in this data here. Um, so you can see in January and February, um, there's no gray bar. There's no energy that's exported back to the grid. Even in March, even the, the back half of March, um, you can see I, I was able to start um, generating some excess energy and exporting some of it. And then beyond that, um, the data gen generation has been really good. Um, I think part of this is related to the weather. So here I'm in the Northeast, um, it has been uh, unusually dry. Um, like the number of days it rained between May and September was very few. I didn't count them up, but it was very few. So it was very hot, very dry, very sunny, um, which obviously is great news for solar. And I think that's why even even now around mid-October, um, I'm already approaching this this annual production estimate. So so it's all good news on that front. Okay, so the next thing I want to show is my consumption. So this is a snapshot. Um, from my utility provider, uh, the last 24, it looks like a little more than that, 24 months of uh, consumption data. And in particular, I want to take a look at uh, 2022 compared to 2021. Um, and again, you, you can sort of see, uh, it, it's interesting, right? You can see directly, you know, when I was able to turn my system on in March. So in January and February, um, still pulling in some energy from the grid. Um, but as soon as I could turn the system on to its fullest capacity, um, I have not had a energy bill um, with the exception of August. Um, so in August, I had to pay um, almost $2 in electricity. Um, but it was notable in August that it was very hot. It was very sunny. Um, and I also have an aging AC unit. So in July, we were away for a couple of weeks. Um, so I think we didn't quite approach having a, a positive energy bill um, or one that we have to pay. Um, but in August, we did have to pay. And that's been it. So, you know, I'm interested, I'm interested to see in the remaining months as we approach, um, as we approach winter, basically, um, you know, the, the amount of uh, output of the roof is going to continue declining. You know, we can see this um, even just in terms of how, you know, when the sun sets, how early the sun begins setting. We lose a lot of daylight in September, um, even more in October and November. So as we approach winter, um, it's going to be interesting to see. So uh, I will do another video in 12 months to kind of show the back half of this um, and how much energy, you know, what our energy needs are. Um, and I'm in I'll be interested to see how that shakes out. But overall, I'd like to say, you know, very. I've been very pleased with everything. Um, you know, 
obviously the the weather has cooperated um, to the detriment of my lawn, but overall um, the weather has cooperated, generated lots of energy, um, was able to offset um, pretty much all of our energy needs. Um, and then the excess energy that we sell back to the grid um, is going towards paying for the roof itself. Um, so all that has has been expected, um, but you know, happy to report. For the remainder of this video, I actually thought I'd go through um, a quick Q&A. So um, I, I have been getting lots of questions about you know, the roof. And so I just want to cover you know, some of the more uh, popular ones. So I think the one of the main questions I get is just, you know, have there been any problems? And aside from the challenges in getting the roof installed, um, the roof has behaved uh, fine. Um, it's something I don't think about, um, you know, just like hopefully your roof right now, if it's just a regular asphalt roof or what have you, um, yeah, I don't think about it. We've had blizzards and thunderstorms and remnants of hurricanes come through um, and it's held up uh, just like I'd hope. Next question that I got was, you know, have, have, has your behavior changed, you know, given your raised awareness? Um, you know, for example, like I said, I, I check the Tesla app almost daily. Um, and the answer is, yeah, I think a little bit. Um, I was always cognizant that, you know, running the dryer would consume lots of energy. Um, and in particular for me with my aging central air unit, um, I really did see this past summer just how much energy it consumes relative to all the other energy needs in my house. And the impact there is, you know, trying to run that a little bit less, um, and then also prioritizing replacing that aging unit in the coming year. And lastly, um, I thought this was a good question is, you know, what surprised you? So it's been six months, you know, what has surprised you both in a good and bad way? Um, on the good, I would say I've been surprised with um, sort of how often I, I do check the, that mobile app, I'd say almost daily. Um, to kind of check in on the house and make sure everything's looking right. It, you know, it's pretty brief, but um, so that's that's been interesting. Um, I think in general, I've also been very happy with the Tesla app. It sort of surfaces all the data and you know all the questions I have in my mind um, very easily. So that so that's been a, a good thing. Um, I think even more importantly has been um, seeing how well the power walls complement the Tesla Solar. Um, so I recorded a video about this in the summer, um, the first time we had a power outage, and we didn't even know. You know, the transition to the backup energy is so seamless that we didn't know. Um, and when that happened, it, it just felt like a game changer. It felt like, okay, this is the way things are going to be going forward, um, hopefully as you know, newer homes get built and they have this technology. And I think lastly, um, sort of, you know, that... I think I was surprised at the amount of satisfaction I got with the first negative energy bill we received. Um, it was sort of a lot of work coordinating, getting the roof installed, you know, waiting patiently to get the PTO permission to operate, um, and then finally turning it on and then, you know, seeing that, hey, you know, our the energy needs of our house have been met, and then some, and then being able to use that money to, to pay off the roof. Um, so that's been good. On the flip side, things that have been bad, um, I'd say top of the list has to be um, Tesla's website in regard to managing uh, the financing. So we had financed uh, the roof and I recorded a whole separate video about this because uh, the frustrations I encountered. So you can check that out as well. Um, but that's been frustrating. They, they keep saying they're gonna make changes and um, make it easier to you know, get access to your data. Um, you know, for example, seeing how much you have left to, uh, to pay off on your loan. Um, so, so that's been frustrating. Obviously, that's uh, a little bit separate than the roof itself, um, but, th but that was surprising. Um, and then lastly, I think sort of one thing that's uh, still TBD in, in my mind is, um, you know, I had enrolled in a few incentive programs with the Powerwalls. Um, it's unclear. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any data or any, so far, any data on um you know, how those power walls were used um, and also what kind of payout I can expect from that. So that would be another future video that I can put together and, and sort of share. Um, but overall, uh, I've been very happy with the roof. Like I said, um, day to day, I, and I don't worry about the roof per se. You know, I sort of check in on the house and see how we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, thus far, I've, I've been really happy. If you have any other questions or comments, please let me know. Um, and until next time. All right. Thank you.